Are we recording? I guess I am recording. All right. Welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful that you're here. Uh, this is a full moon. I'm really thrown off. There it is. There's my little recording button. Um, I'm kind of thrown off right now. Uh, this is a full moon report, right? And we are going to be looking at the full moon on the 29th of December 2020. And we're going to be looking at the third quarter week, which is going to lead up to a third quarter square of the moon and sun on, you guessed it, January 6th. Look at that. So this full moon is really... First of all, it's not eclipsed. So we are going to get the full brunt of the full moon. Um, she will be in Cancer in her home sign. This is a very feminine full moon. This in fact is signaling to us that it is time to allow the feminine to step forward. Um, there is, uh, wow, there is so much energy here that is moving away from action and moving away from the masculine energy of action and doing things in order to get results. And as much as there are some aspects here, we're still going to have Chiron and Aries. Um, Saturn and Jupiter are now in Aquarius. That is fixed air. That technically is a masculine element um, of air. We're going to have Mars by the end of this week move into Taurus, also on the 6th. The 6th is a very important day because not only does that represent our crisis in consciousness um, based on what we have revealed to us and reflected back to us about each of us individually, um, subconsciously, emotionally. And when we have a moon in Cancer, it is definitely going to be watery and emotional, okay? And it's very much about the feminine stepping forward. But not only that, um, Mars is going to move into Taurus. And all of this energy um, where Mars has been accumulating and, and all this potential and all of this action-oriented and, and courage and, and bravery, all this warriorship that is... Um, that Mars has been engaged with in its home territory of Aries this whole time. He's gonna move into Taurus on the sixth and plant his feet firmly on the ground. It will move from being within the spark, that electrical current that is the spark of life, the seed point of our subjective experience, our ego consciousness, feeling it a, you know, this impulse to be something, to come out of the formlessness is going to very much plant itself. Um, this is a really good indication. This and the full moon that's happening on the 29th. These are two major points of uh, recognition that it is time now for the feminine to step forward, um, which is what receiving, holding space, fluidity, um, nurturing, um, being passive um, and not in a weak way, of course, this is not about weakness, this is about allowance and aligning, resonating with the sacred geometric pattern of this new earth that is unfolding, okay? Capricorn, you know, for all of the for all of the references to, you know, the, the paternal aspect versus cancer being the maternal aspect and, and the patriarchy and being responsibility and structure and form and all of those aspects that have to do with um, our karma. It's important to note that Capricorn is still an earth signature and it has a feminine signature. Capricorn is really about the unfolding of nature, the unfolding of the natural world in a pattern, a geometric pattern. And this full moon is giving us a chance to really dive very deeply into who we each individually are, to get deeper into the mystery of who we are um, and really stabilize ourselves very deeply into a core that we didn't even know was there but that will require us to express ourselves, to creatively express ourselves, the sun, through this divine resonance. We need to be in, um, we need to be within the universal current. We need to be attuned to the rhythm of universal life. And that is something outside of our own individual um, 
subjective experience. Capricorn is about group integration. It is about the resonance of a group with a pattern unfolding in order to create something and in, in order to be part of something that is being creative out of our, our, our values, right? That's Sagittarius, the cultural values, the understanding, the alchemy process itself. Capricorn is the unfolding of that process. And if we can be in resonance with that, if we can be in the universal current, if we can be attuned to the rhythm of universal life and, and realize the spiritual meaning and purpose at the core of any situation, if we can do that, we will see we will see something deeper about ourselves that we didn't even know was there. We will have this spontaneous and innocent, um, you know, curiosity and, and drive almost to get into the mystery, something so much deeper than we ever imagined about ourselves. Cancer is about a decision where we are planting ourselves, where our root systems are going to stabilize us to the core of who we are. That's why the bottom of the chart, that's the nadir, that is zero degrees cancer. That is where we place our flag, where we belong, where we feel safe, the identity that we, um, that allows us to feel like part of something, those familial bonds. It is also the womb that holds us. There's protection there with these familial bonds that cancer represents. And it is really where the character develops the most is in cancer. It is where we develop our self-esteem and is where we develop our character. It is where our personality really starts to um, solidify. And this is the consolidation of our personal power um, to be who we truly are, which comes with Leo in the fifth house is the expression of that. Cancer is about the containment of that vulnerable part of us in order for it to be fully what it is. And this full moon is this opportunity to see that, but it requires that we are in attunement to the rhythm of natural universal life. Capricorn is the unfolding of the pattern. It is the engine of nature herself that is unfolding. It can't be about our own individual um, actions. It can't be, you know, especially with Chiron going to be in square to a Cancer moon that same day on the 29th. It is going, you know, provide a challenge um, between a part of us that is trying to create space for something new um, emotionally and intuitively. Whereas Chiron is drawing our attention back to the wounding of ourself, how we are going to um, heal that part of us. Are we still engaged in the identity of being a victim? Are we still trying to heal other people um, as a way to bypass that when all we need to do is let go of the identity that we have that leads to that feeling of shame and wounding? And it's in Aries and it's going to be in Aries for a long time. So these these patterns aren't going away. We don't have to figure them out right now. What's important is we have to allow the feminine to step forward and hold space for what's coming in, okay? It's not gonna come as a result of action. And when Mars moves into Taurus on the sixth, that is gonna be very clear because that energy of ambition and impulsivity and drive is going to plant itself into the soil and allow that growth process of our consciousness to really start to unfold naturally. Uranus is really important to pay attention to right now. Uranus is the ruling planet of Aquarius. Uranus is the collective third eye. In the chart, Uranus represents the psychological crisis that you will go through that will trigger your transformation, okay? It'll trigger your growth. It'll trigger your awakening. And in Taurus, we're talking about the physical material world around us, what we value, our resources. Uranus, especially retrograde, has been upending all of these aspects of our lives in order to give us a chance to awaken into the cycle, to trust the cycle. And specifically at this degree where it's going to go direct on the 14th, Uranus is showing us that when we can we can, when we can let go of the old obsolete patterns, when we can let go, if we're not holding on so tightly, um, we can trust the cycle 
Okay, we can trust the cycle um, of nature. And if we let go of what is obsolete and no longer working for us and letting go of the past, it allows us to create the space to see what will be coming in. Even if we don't see it all the way yet, it's just the action of letting go that will allow us to um, change our focus. And Uranus continually turning everything on its side, upending it in terms of our material world and our values and our resources um, in order to bring us around to this, to realize that their only way to move forward is that we have to let go of what has been. It's all, there's never a it's always a constant, you know, it's a constant growth. There's never any stagnation in nature, okay? It just seems like that when you have large cycles and Uranus represents a large cycle, but it's really coming down to the divine feminine stepping forward, receptiveness, openness, fluidity, nurturing, compassion, forgiveness. This is all Neptune's territory too, right? Neptune and Pisces. So let's look at today. I talked a lot about this on the live, so I'm not going to go into a lot of it. Just saying that with the moon, look at here, the moon has crossed her own north node um, in Gemini and is in a sextile to Mars. Really the thing, the big takeaway for today is that um, there are a lot of there are a lot of ideas and trains of thought. There are a lot of thought forms that we can engage in, a lot of things being communicated to us, okay? And we are taking it in on a very um, emotional level, a feeling-based level in our subconscious, in our intuition. And sometimes it can be maddening, right? Mercury is the trickster and Mercury rules Gemini. Um, it can be maddening if we um, don't put a cap on it. And especially this particular degree, you know, this is a buffet of every and any idea that we could possibly fill up on and put on our tray. Well, with Pluto in Capricorn in this quincunx to the moon, actually right now, it's uh, um, coming into a quincunx. There's adjustment that's going to be made here because the reality is that, um, you know, we can't put all of that stuff back onto the buffet when we decide we can't eat it. It doesn't work that way. Um, and we certainly can't allow things to expand out into this crazy wild growth and then prune it back and expect that that's going to be enough because Pluto is up, you know, is just taking thread by thread everything that our culture has developed and refined, all of our traditions, all of the beautiful things that has um, created over, um, over time in order for us to stand upon. You were talking about the, the rugs, an oriental rug, a prayer mat. These are beautiful, you know, beautiful physical material signs and representations of our culture and our traditions. And Pluto is just coming through and like, well, I'm destroying that too. Um, and so there'll be nothing for you to stand on. There'll be no remnants of your culture left to stand on. Um, and let alone having any place to put your cafeteria tray that's filled. Um, even if you try to put it back, it's not going, it's not going to work. Um, we will need to adjust. And this adjustment is going to show us that the only real way for Mars to um, not drop everything that it's holding right now, it is holding so much potential right now. The only way for Mars to not drop it completely is for us to let go of all the ideas, all of the thought forms, all of the possibilities that are not essential to us and let them go. We have, to, we have to strip it all away down to the bare essentials. And if we can do that, then Mars will be able to um, hold everything that has been accumulated in terms of potential energy this whole time, because that is what is going to be embedded in the soil when Mars gets to Taurus. But if he drops it all, because we are just consuming so much in terms of thought forms and ideas, then it's, it's, we're going to drop it all we would drop it all. And we, we don't want to do that. And we don't want to release it. We want to plant it. We want to embed it in the soil. We want to trust the natural cycles of it unfolding over time and um, letting the masculine actually 
engage with the feminine. There needs to be a space in order to create something within. And Mars is about to come and place all of that potential into the soil in order for something to new to sprout out of it. But we can't do that if we are holding so much that Mars just drops it all, okay? So this is an important takeaway for today. Now coming into the 29th is when we have the full moon. And so I already talked about this, the sun in Capricorn. This is where our creative expression is in, in this group integration. Um, and more than that, a group integration into um, a group resonance and a group um, alignment with this pattern that is unfolding in our natural world of, of creation and, and the natural rhythm. Okay. So, oh, I don't know what happened to our chart. It's still loading. This, when the moon moves into cancer, like I said, this is where we plant our flag. This is a decision point. Each of us emotionally and subconsciously are going to make, okay? There's a decision point here. Um, let's see here. Oh, it's still loading. We will all do this. And there, there, will be, there will be some adjustment here, especially when the moon is in a quincunx to Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius. This is our future, right? This is where we are headed. This is the coherence to natural law. And that is about the collective. But the moon is in a place where we are each individually addressing ourselves, where our personal power is. And so while these larger these larger transpersonal planets are focused on the future and where we are headed, we have to take a step back and um, make sure that we are planted um, where we need to be planted, okay? And that we are very clear about the position that we are taking because this is where we are going to stay. And we have to decide if this is where we are in fact emotionally stable. So this adjustment will be important today in order, um, in order to make sure that this happens. So the moon is also going to try or try. It's going to square Chiron. We just talked about this. We're going to want to create this space within us for something new to grow. Whereas Chiron is just like, no, I really need to focus on how I've been wounded in this identity and just like running through this whole cycle. And we're in Aries. So this is about the spark of life, the seed point of who we are, how it's been damaged and, and what aspect of that identity we need to let go of. Well, emotionally, we're, we're like, I don't even want to deal with that. I want to create space for something new to come in. So lean into this because this is where you're going to learn about what you can let go of in terms of that identity to create space within you. The square is going to really provide that opportunity. Now, the moon is actually making a sextile to Uranus. So there is some, there is an opportunity here for us to really get deeply um, in line with the, the energies that are hidden but natural right? Spirits dancing under the moonlight. If we can embody this um, invisible forces and the playfulness that it represents within us, right? Because we are feeling emotionally secure and we're feeling emotionally stable. Um, two nature spirits dancing under the moonlight. This will allow, if we can embody this each personally, this will allow us to actually see what is coming um, and see the bigger picture, see the awakening process, allow that third eye to open a little bit more and let go of the past. There's a lot of letting go of what has been in order to create space for something new. If we're going to take any action on anything, that is what we can do is to let go and create space. That is the most action we can take right now um, in this time because it allows us to then resonate fully with, again, this Capricorn fractal that is unfolding, right? The nature that is unfolding. And then we have the full moon. And so again, this is, will be about, can we align with natural harmony? Can we align with the divine attune, you know, can we attune to the divine rhythm of the universe here? And if we can, we're gonna be able to, um, you know, see so much deeper into the mystery of who we are than we ever have been. Um, this is important because this is going to set the tone for when we get to the sixth, okay, which is in fact um, 
a really important day. Like I said, it is when the sun and moon square, um, crisis in consciousness, right? Are we going to um, uh, are we going to release our inhibitions? Are we going to express ourselves by releasing our inhibitions to be naked and authentic um, and not allow what has been to determine how we express ourselves, but to let it all go? And or are we going to the, the tension here, the square is going to be um, a feeling place of letting it all go, stepping back right? Stepping back and seeing what we had been part of and, 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 and being separate and having a calm observation of everything that we had been part of. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily, this is not about one is better than the other, or we should, um, a square is about what happens when these trajectories meet, what is the tension that happens? And it's going to be about wanting things to feel balanced and um, taking a step back emotionally so as not to be involved. Whereas creatively, we're going to feel very driven to express ourselves by releasing the inhibitions, by shedding the um, all of the, the clothing that our culture has placed upon us that have kept us um, inhibited this whole time. Again, this is happening on the 6th. And when Mars moves into Taurus and plants himself in the soil, it's going to be very clear where, where we are we going to allow this to happen? Or do we know how are we going to be able to plant that sacred masculine part of ourselves into the soil and allow it to um, unfold naturally? Um, or are we going to, um, you know, act out? Um, and this is where that square is so important because it's going to it's going to require a little bit of both um, and it's going to require us leaning into the stress and the tension that's created when these two trajectories meet each other in this square. Now, some other things that are happening this week, oh my gosh, this is just one end and the other. So we have uh, Venus is gonna square on the 30th, is going to uh, square Neptune. And Venus is also um, going to meet the South Node. And so this is a potential moment here where we can, Venus, it's it's really tempting for Venus, right? She's she's going to be really tempted to identify with this action and this alchemy. Um, and you know, Venus attracts things to her. Again, she is very much about the sacred feminine in incarnated in physical form, what feels good to her, um, what appeases our senses, who we love, what we value, um, and that is everything: our resources, our physical reality, our relationships. Um, it's all about how it makes us feel um, in our senses. That is what Venus represents. It's going to be very tempting to align with when it comes to our emotions, when it comes to our relationships and the, the resources and material world around us. I mean, look at this. It's going to be very tempting. Um, it's going to be very tempting, especially with the moon in a quincunx to Venus here, moon in Cancer. It's going to be um, in a trine to Neptune. It's going to be very tempting to align with the South Node. Just remember, this is the momentum that pushes us forward. This is where we've come from. We've already alchemized relationships um, and allowed ourselves to prepare for the future. But that's because We've, we've already had the collective values and the belief systems that allowed this to happen. Um, we can see that for what it is and we can use it in the moment, um, but it is not where we are headed at all. This North Node is where we are headed. This is new ideas. This is the, the, the range of ideas that we can interact with, not, not settling into what has already happened and the value systems and the belief systems that we've already created. We've already been here, okay? Um, and so she brings it to her. So it's really tempting to, um, it's gonna be very tempting to pull this all in and to situate ourselves in terms of what we value in our relationships in this place that we've already been in terms of preparing ourselves for what's to come by, um, you know, through our understanding of the world around us. 
the thing is our understanding is going to change that's the whole point of us heading towards this gemini energy is that we are in uh we are headed towards and we need this new set of ideas and thought forms in order for us to evolve but that doesn't mean that there's nothing here it just means that we're not heading towards this we need to see it as momentum moving forward um, in our relationships and in our in our relationships and what we value around us but it's it's going to be tempting to stay here or to see this as the way um, this is the past we've already done this. And when Venus is in the past, um, it's hard for her to move forward or to move out. Okay. Especially with a quincunx to a moon that's in trine to uh, Neptune and Pisces, a moon in cancer. It is just, we are a vessel for this transmission, this divine transmission directly. Um, this will require that adjustment with Venus over the South node. Of course it will. Um, and there's, there is so much more coming in. Remember, it is about the feminine. It is about holding space. It is about fluidity, compassion, forgiveness, um, 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 divine connection, soul connection here with Neptune and Pisces, the great dissolver. Um, and we can just hold that when we have the moon in Cancer because we are protected, because we are contained by that which contains us, our familial bonds, our national identity, all of that stuff. So this will naturally give us an opportunity to adjust this and not get pulled into our old belief systems and value systems and religions because this, this process of alchemy is meant to push us forward into a new, into a new place, not for us to get um, caught up here. So this, and then when we move into New Year's Eve, the 31st, um, this is when the moon will actually meet or not the moon, this is when Venus will meet the south node. So we will have already experienced this really strong, fluid, divine, beautiful transmission into our own intuitive channel. Um, and it will, it's already allowed for um, an adjustment with Venus, which represents the incarnated aspect of the divine feminine into the real world. And so when she does meet the South Node on the 31st, we can see it for what it is, the momentum push us forward rather than getting stuck in our old belief systems and values and trying to alchemize through that, okay? It's to propel us forward, not for us to get caught and the end of the dragon, the tail of the dragon, where we've come from. And we also see here that um, the moon is gonna come into Leo and in an opposition to Saturn and Jupiter. So I'll talk a lot more about that um, when, uh, when the time comes on New Year's Eve, just to say that around that time, the moon's gonna move into Leo and that is when our sovereign nature really comes online and we are going to really feel a really strong urge to express ourselves and our sovereign being. Um, and just keep this in mind as, as we look at all this red, there's a lot of tension in this chart. Um, and so again, it's important. And look at this black moon Lilith meeting Uranus. Um, this aspect of survival um, is coming into play now when it comes to the uh, physical material reality around us. So um, it's, it's gonna heat up around this time, okay? And this is why, um, this full moon is really important because it's going to challenge us to come back into resonance with this sacred geometry that's unfolding um, at the same time, while at the same time feeling a very strong urge to express ourselves, okay? And again, it's going to be in opposition to Saturn and Jupiter, which is like, this is the future. And it's just like, well, I don't care about the future. I'm more interested in expressing myself, but the future and the collective. I need to, I need to express, I need to let this out. And so it, it will come out and that's a pretty strong, that's a pretty strong thing to be happening on New Year's Eve. So we come into the first and um, 
you know, the, the real big, and there, there are transits that happen all through this, but the real big one we should look at is the fourth, which is when, um, the, when Mercury meets Pluto, because that's going to then really set the tone for when we come into uh, the sixth. So Mercury meets Pluto and Mercury, remember, is the only deity, was the only um, Roman Greek god that could go into the underworld. And so we are going to get a very, very clear communication, a very clear download, a very clear look, objective, rational look at what Pluto is in fact destroying right in front of our very eyes. It's gonna be very clear to us. It's going to be, we're gonna have blinders on, we're gonna see it. It's gonna be where our, we're focused on it. And we'll be able to exit very easily if we are able to see it for what it is um, and move just as quickly out of the feeling space of it because it's very destructive. Um, and when you're talking about destroying the very traditions that our culture is built on, it can um, be very destructive um, on so many levels. So when Mercury meets Pluto on the fourth, we're going to get a really clear objective look at this um, and, and and it will activate it it'll it'll bring it right to our mind we will see it very clearly we will know it very clearly um, and then we can just as easily move past it and stay focused on our goals um, in terms of our objective reality in terms of our intellectual reality and our rational thought because this is what mercury represents but this is intense because then we move into the sixth which is as I said, when Mars moves into Taurus and the third quarter moon squares the sun. So that's a lot of information, guys. Um, and you can see here that the moon is in Virgo. Um, you got this grand square here. This, um, oh my gosh, look at this uh, grand square here with this cross in the middle. Um, I'm not up on the aspects in terms of what the names are necessarily, but I will tell you that there is a lot of tension right here. Um, and these oppositions with um, the moon and Neptune and then the nodes um, is very karmic. And it's we're gonna really be pulled into how do we actually, um, how do we actually remedy this opposition between uh, the Neptune and Pisces, which is dissolving everything into one formless um, collective unconscious that is transmitting the divine information to us and um, Again, this is a sink or swim type of energy right here, um, plus all of this karmic energy with the nodes and then squaring it as well. Um, this is an incredible moment. And then we come into the sixth where we have the third quarter square. So I know it's a lot of information. I've tried so many, I've, I've done many takes on this to get it out just because I'm having technical issues as well. And so, um, I could go on and on and there'll be daily astrology, of course, to um, add to this and to give more layers. There's going to be just like every morning, there will be the daily medicine intuitive reading on Facebook. I have deactivated the Instagram account. So that's not going to be in the description box anymore. Um, I'm just not getting a lot of traction there. And it just it just seemed like an extra step where I wasn't really getting anything out of it. So I'm not I'm not there on um, Catalyst Energies is not on Instagram anymore. So um, your best bet for social media is to come to Facebook for now, um, YouTube for the videos, obviously the website, and you can sign up for the email list through the website. Um, that's one way to keep in touch. And I'll let you know as things progress where um, platform, what platforms I'm going to be involved with. But if you find this information helpful, please consider subscribing for the time being, hitting the like button. It really helps the information get out there um, and, and spread to those who might also find this helpful. Um, there is a lot, there's a lot going on right now and it just seems like it doesn't end. And it's really important that we are letting the feminine start to step forward so we can hold space, so that we can receive, so that we can be nurturing and compassionate um, because that's really how we're gonna move through this time. It's not gonna be on on taking action um, definitively. And when Mars comes into Taurus on the 6th, it will firmly plant its feet into the soil in which it will um, allow our consciousness to grow as we move forward. 
And uh, that is going to be some really intense time. So keep in touch. Um, let me know if you need anything. If you can always reach out by email. If you're interested in a reading, um, I can. You can go to the website and book through there. I'm offering a special on the Beginner Starseed package up until the 21st of January at a discount. Um, and I'll be taking reading. I'll be taking bookings for readings um, starting. Um, I can do a couple more. But once next week starts, um, I have to get ready to move. So um, it'll be more of mid-January, yeah, around like the 11th, I'll start taking readings again, if you're interested. So you can always check that out on the website. I've talked for way too long, so I'm going to stop now. I love you guys. I will see you on the next video. Have a wonderful full moon. I'll see you for the daily medicine tomorrow.